Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Republican Senator Mike Rounds introduced the Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena Disclosure Act of 2023 to be included in the National Defense Authorization Act. The legislation, 63 pages in length, would force the government, particularly the Pentagon, to come clean with Congress and the American people regarding what it knows about UAPs and what it knows is a lot. As both senators noted, this critical provision was stripped by Republicans in the House. Ohio Republican Congressman Mike Turner and other Republicans with deep ties to the defense industry led this effort to derail democracy. Senator Schumer said, quote, it's really an outrage the House didn't work with us on adopting our proposal for a review board, which of course by definition here is bipartisan in the Senate. Now it means that the declassification of UAP records will largely be up to the same entities that have blocked, obfuscated their disclosure for decades. This is indeed an outrage. But there is much that Americans should be outraged about. Outraged that elements of the United States government have decided the American people cannot be told the truth. Outraged that Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks, with a stroke of a pen, can decide on her own that Congress does not need to know the true nature of certain classified special access programs. Outraged that the Central Intelligence Agency has been using a secret program called the Office of Global Access to hire private defense contractors to recover crashed off-world vehicles as a method to hide these recovery operations from Congress. Outraged that the CIA Office of Global Access, in concert with elements of the Joint Special Operations Command, hired private security contractors operating under non-official cover to target and physically threaten government whistleblowers, American whistleblowers. Most of all, Americans should be outraged that our democracy is being subverted by a group of non-elected government officials who have decided for themselves in a perverse twisted way that the people we elect are nothing more than temporary employees who must be kept in the dark. It's outrageous. It's criminal. It's un-American. We've got a, a smash-up piece coming to us from Christopher Sharp at the Liberation Times. Let me get to the desktop video. There we go. Liberation Times logo. Bring it down. All right. Let's get into this one, friends. Um, well, there's no way to spin it. There was a defeat. The key unidentified anomalous phenomena language contained with the National Defense Authorization Act, also known as NDAA, for fiscal year 2024, was brutally killed, removing any semblance of meaning. So, what we're dealing with here is the people versus the defense contractors and intelligence community. Oversight versus corruption. Democracy versus special interests. Unfortunately, the latter, the latter in each case won. Um, the next way to take a look at it also, the controlled disclosure campaign I wanted to go to that one. Damn it. It's not supposed to go there. I know why. Do it again. Go to here. Sorry about that, folks. The controlled disclosure campaign was also killed, unfortunately. Um, sorry, I've got my thing here is not behaving the way that it should. All right. So um, the Independent Review Board dedicated to UA UAP disclosure. Let me just bring this around here so we can see it a little bit better for everyone to go ahead and see it. That way I'm not going to go ahead and. All right. Here we go. All right. The controlled disclosure campaign was killed. The Independent Review Board dedicated UAP information materials was killed. The authority of eminent domain wielded by the U.S. federal government over any materials or biological evidence of unknown or non-human origin 
killed. New whistleblower and witness protections killed. Enforcement of subpoena killed. Amnesty provisions for defense contractors and other entities in possession of UAP related material and involved in illegal illegalities, illegalities killed. It just goes, the list has gone on and on. Even Chuck Schumer, the influential Senator Lee, uh, Senate leader, along with many others in Congress, couldn't break through the barriers. Not even close. It's off of here. Get back to here. All right. So, this is not being happy today. Sorry, I'm running on a caffeine deficiency. All right. Um, couldn't break through the barriers surrounding the secrecy of UAP. But this was a battle that was much larger, a much larger war being fought. One person recently told the Liberation Times that the killing of the wide-ranging UAP language contained within the Senate's NDAA was comparable to military jets flying over hostile territory to identify enemy radar systems. Those hostile to transparency and democratic oversight are now known. To provide a few examples, according to multiple Liberation Times sources, they are. These are the, these are the ones who are directly behind all of these things being killed. Who are we talking about? I have dog fur being on the bottom of my laser mouse. Let's get to it. All right. First one, Lockheed Martin. That's no surprise. Not even close. Representative Mike Turner, who's chair of the intelligence, House Intelligence Community, who, by the way, has gotten a lot of money from Lockheed Martin. Representatives Mike Rogers, chair of the House Armed Service Committee. Representative Mike Johnson, who is the Speaker of the House. Senator Mitch McConnell the minority Senate leader, Mr. Turtle himself, and Senator Roger Wicker, ranging, ranking member of the Senate's Armed Services Committee. So we have all these committee leads going on. Get to a different color, bring it up. Let's go to blue. House Intelligence Com uh, Committee, chair of the Ho Armed Services Committee, ranking member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. We have another person, Speaker of the House, minority Senate leader. So. While in Congress, there is a overwhelmingly support. If you were to go ahead and poll all the members in Congress, if they had to come forward and do a vote today, and it was open to Congress, this matter would have passed. However, the intelligence community, the IC, specific military contractors and the political action committees who can donate unlimited funds to these guys got to the, didn't go to the, uh, get support from this from the actual base. They went and they sank their money into the leadership. It's a sad situation to say the least. Now, additional information sources say that the CIA and defense contractors pinpointed the key politicians named above who are able to thwart other members of Congress, including Senator Schumer and Mike Rounds, who understood to have fought hard to pass the language in the act. There is some positive news, though. Section 8, 1687, referring to the limitation on use of funds for certain unreported programs, remained. This language restricts the use of authorized uh, funds authorized for any activities related to UAP unless the Secretary of Defense provides details of such activities to specific congressional com uh, committees and leadership. Additionally, it imposes limitations on independent research and development funding for UAP unless information is made available to the same congressional entities. Here's the thing, Mike, on this one. No, no money has been approved for co by... Uh, you know, stated by the DOD or informed Congress that they're going to be spending on these programs. Yet, isn't it the requirement of Congress to have oversight on this already? Oh, it's written in the Constitution. Yeah, the Congress has to have explicit oversight. They're the ones that hold the purse and the funding. But as we've been discovering, the uh, intelligence community has been systematically providing its own source of funding and 
they have appropriated the money that they can't account for. <clears throat> Excuse me. They have been failing every budget audit for the past six years running. Billions upon billions of dollars are unaccounted for. How about, That's let's just, where it goes Mike, into. it's beyond billions, it's trillions. <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. Trillions of dollars. So they don't really need congressional oversight. They have their own funding with money that they've already been granted that no one ever sees. It never sees the light of day as far as what it's being used for. Um, yeah, this has been the systemic problem that we've been dealing with all along. Yeah. Nothing new with this. This hey, goes back to what Danny was talking about, Danny Sheehan. Hey, Mike. When he said, yeah. You're a little short on breath. And you've got an you've got a, a a dry cough that sounds a little crackly. You need to see the doctor. I, I yeah no I I've already seen the doctor. It's an upper respiratory infection that's been running rampant throughout my house. As yeah, you are well aware of. <laughs> so I'm trying to manage it, but I'm okay. Uh, yeah okay okay dad. <laughs> yeah there we go. <laughs> yeah I might, I just don't have to get another phone call saying oh my god he's so sick he won't go to the doctor. No, no, I've, I've seen too many doctors already. Are you kidding me? Yeah, for the so, kids. Yeah. Yeah, for the kids, right. Yeah. And the wife and everybody else. So it's an endless line of doctors. But right. anyway, uh, yeah, Denny Sheehan pointed out that um, Oliver North, back in the 80s under Reagan, was running the Iran-Contra affair, providing weapons and support to the Contras. And um, they were able to do that without needing anything from the Congress. They had their own methods of funding that. They were bringing cocaine by plane loads into the country and distributing it. And the CIA has always been able to fund themselves. They don't need to answer to anybody. It's almost like they are uh, they are wholly a fourth a fourth branch of the government. They they act independently. Yeah. So, yeah, we've covered that and different aspects of it on the show over different episodes repeatedly. It's yeah. the same thing. And Chris is putting a spotlight on it now. So his article is good because he's making these points. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, Lee, you have your hand up, my friend. Yeah, I just I wanted to double down on what Chris is saying here about the fact of what survived and didn't and what Mike was just talking about. They're, they're basically saying non-approved funds are going to be looked into. Well, when you give money to a contractor and when the contractor says it costs, you know, $1,000 to build part A, when in truth it only actually costs, you know, $110, um, that's been approved money that was given to the contractor and they accept their budget and they expect their expenditures. And uh, then there's no, there's no further trail. So they take the rest of that $1,000, which is, you know, $890, and they kick it off to whoever they want to. Right. Um, and this is what's being talked about. So as far as being an approved um, expenditure, it's already been approved because the contractors are overvaluing what it costs to build or do what the government has given them money to do. And there's no inquiry or inquisition past that point into what was actually spent and what was produced. Yeah. Gress it talked about this. Sheehan talked about it. And that's how they're siphoning this money, laundering it basically, basically and to other avenues of, uh, and, and those other avenues have been doing this for decades. And uh, yes, Mike is right. They have their own finances through illegal drug trade and the CIA and that too. But even the money that Congress has been giving to these programs, um, only like 10 or 20% of it is actually spent on what they produce. Yeah. The rest of it just goes into the whatever sphere. Right. Yet when they put the DOD under audit, what do the accountants come back and say? We ain't found shit. They yeah, can they can't find... account for 60% of their assets. So yeah. every, every dollar that is given to a contractor through the DOD gives to a contractor, they're only, they can only say that 40 cents of it was actually spent and produced towards what was given. The, yeah. other, the other 60 cents per dollar just disappears. It does, it does, it does. Now, I'm going to sidetrack. Actually, we'll get through this one little piece, and I've got another piece to bring up in the middle of this one. However, the language that we were just talking about uh, with, with regards to where the money can or can't be spent no longer includes the level of detail contained within the initial language, including references to recover and reverse engineer of UAP craft linked to the limitations of such funds. I want to pause this article here for one piece because I have two pieces I want to get into that completely tie into this. First of all, talking about the representatives where we were, we were just talking about. This is a, coming from another article that was uh, put out about uh, 
Mike Johnson, who is the new Speaker of the House of uh, Representatives, Majority Leader, uh, Mike Johnson is getting a little taste of conservative hate recently. Johnson, who replaced Speaker Kevin McCarthy, was recently hit with a direct attack from fellow GOPer Marjorie Taylor Greene, <laughs> the Beetlejuice lady herself, where she claimed that no member of the National Defense Authorization Act conference, quote, had any influence on this process. So this is a group that's part of Congress that specifically is there to deal with the approval of the NDAA, and none of them had it. Uh, had it had any say into it. It was done in secret meetings with no input from conference conferees. Conferees, the lawmaker noted. Now, other conservatives are upset with the NDAA in terms of what Republicans were able to accomplish in the negotiations. Johnson said that, quote, Republicans fought to secure crucial wins in this year's NDAA, the annual federal law, which sets our national defense policy. However, the social media platform corrected Johnson, saying that the final NDAA agreed upon by the House and Senate does not bend. Uh, these are Republican things, not necessarily. I'm just reporting what's out there. I don't agree with it. Do not bad, bad drag shows or gender-affirming care. The NDAA came out funding abortion, transsexual surgery, extends warrantless visa searches, and funded Ukraine of $175 billion. All of that went through. Yet, they eviscerated the UAP Disclosure Act and made it easier for the FBI to abuse the unconstitutional FISA 702 process. So, the, the Republicans had agenda item after agenda item, like I just talked about. You've heard them all belly aching and going off in the news about this, saying... What is Lloyd Austin doing? He's letting this go on the military. He's making everything more woke. All of those things that the Republican majority in the House did not support all went through. But all the key critical pieces, specifically on disclosure, were gutted. Our political uh, correspondent, Brian Pemble, has his hand up. Yeah, this is the way it goes. You get in these conferences or, or, or when it goes to the committees, the whole point is if what Marjorie Taylor Greene is saying is true, which it is, um, they need to take the reins back in as lawmakers, kick these people out of the conferences and committees. I mean, I know it's not going to happen, but that's what they need to do. And then they need to pull the funding from these people until they start shaping up. Um, until then, I just don't see anything changing because you can put as many laws as you want out there, and the second it goes to a committee or the second it goes to conference, that's when all these people get their greedy little hands in there and things get changed around. And then you as a lawmaker goes, well, what the heck? It wasn't anything we did. You know, we didn't have any say in it. Well, yeah. start taking the reins. You are the, yeah. you know, the House and Senate members. Take the reins. Yeah. You know, uh, someone just brought up in the chat about, I think it was Chris Morales, saying that there's going to be a, a protest going outside of Mike Turner's office. I say take it personal. Have it outside the office and have it outside the guy's house, around the clock with drums and beats and everything out there, trumpets blaring. Do what we have to do to get our point across. Absolutely. We need to hold their feet to the fire. So I, I am in complete agreement with that. If you're in the area, go for it. Please go. Yeah. Um, and and you can always hire protesters too. Oh yeah, that's a fact. Now, anti large brings up some, brings up a great point. Why right now? If Biden wanted to disclose the UAP topic, he would if he wanted to. This is not a Democrat or Republican issue. This is an issue with the corruption of our entire government. Spot on, anti large. What do you think about that one, Brian? Well, he's a hundred. I've been making points about this repeatedly on the show. He's 100 percent correct about that. The president could easily sign a pen with an executive order and make all of this information publicly known. He just won't. And I don't think it has to do with political or party lines. They just won't for some reason. They're keeping this tightly under wraps. Sorry to interrupt you, Brian. Continue. No, no, you are exactly right. And uh, I know we brought that up yesterday, too. Now, one thing they can also do, um, Senator Schumer can turn around and introduce it as a clean bill. And Mike Johnson, by the way, on the House can do the same thing. He can 
you know, he can copy the Schumer language or he can reintroduce the Burchettes um, as a clean bill and let's get everybody's vote on it <laughs> out in public. Johnson was one of the people behind it being shut down. He supported oh, it. Oh, exactly. He's, 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 he should be on that list of Turner Rod. Yeah. There he is right on your screen. Yeah, he's right there. A hundred percent. But these guys, as, as a leader of the, the majority leader of the Senate and the, and the speaker of the house, they have the ability to bring these things to the floor. And I sure as heck would at least like to see that. But, 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 uh, you know, the president's got ultimate uh, declassification powers. Yeah. I've got you so, completely. So, so, so we'll see if these leaders do that. I hope, you know, I hope that, that Schumer does it. Well, I doubt he's going to do it before Christmas, but if he's going to do it, please do it in January when you come back. Yeah. First contact brings up a great point. UAP should reveal themselves to the world. There's no reason to wait for corrupt humans, politicians, arbitrary timelines. I think there is a timeline that we've been put on. Whether we, whether those in Washington, D.C. like it or not, they're seeing thousands of UFOs or UAPs up in the orbit of around our planet on a monthly basis. There's an escalation going on, and there's a reason for that escalation. And, if it ha- and, and, and I've said for a while, we've got a greater chance of the UAP coming and having a mass landing around the planet and them revealing themselves than we do of having our federal government coming out and telling telling us the truth. It's like the perpetuated cover-up of the sex abuse scandal that was going on in the Catholic Church. They're just trying to perpetuate it and cover up for them, their friends and their buddies. But you know what? They're all culpable. They're all uh, they're all uh, criminal in this, aren't they, Mike? Oh, completely. And, and speaking of being criminal, going back to our original point about funding, just like we know that the Department of Defense has systematically failed each and every audit you do know you realize it's not just contained within the department of defense lockheed martin with their f-35 program that was over 1.7 trillion dollars they were 10 years behind and 80 percent over budget that means there's missing money to this this F-35 program that isn't accounted for and never will be. Gee, I wonder what you think they did with that money. Care to take a oh. guess? Yeah. It, it, well, reverse engineering programs, potentially. And we know that Lockheed, because anytime anyone reaches out to Lockheed about their involvement in UAPs or UFOs, they say, well, we can't say anything. You need to go talk to the federal government, basically saying, yeah, we've got something here. Go talk to the feds is kind of what they're saying. They're not denying it. They're not saying, no, we don't have anything here. They're saying, go talk to your friends in Washington. They'll answer your questions. That talk is to Susan Goff. Talk to the Department of Defense. They've said that. Publicly and officially, you're right. Yeah, I saw the uh, thing from Burnett Broadcasting from Como News here in uh, as Mark Burnett from Como Broadcasting up here in uh, Washington State. They've been on this. They've asked Barnett the questions. Parker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it hits home it. for a lot of us on this situation, unfortunately. So let's get back to this article here. We've got another piece, actually. Uh, where is that at? You know, talking about the military contractors, right? Who yes. have, who have, who have the cotton? I would say not the content. They have the materials. They're working with the materials. Ross knows about them, but it sounds like Ross may be a bit sympathetic to him. In this tweet here, coming saying that uh, private contractors have taken part in crash retrievals. I'm aware of at least one, likely more. But Ross Kohlhar sympathizes with private aerospace companies that allegedly have non-human technology in their possession, especially if they retrieve the technology themselves from a crash landing uh, only for the U.S. government to snatch it away. I don't fully agree with his take, but hear him out. So let's go ahead and listen to Ross Kohlhart's take on this. Here we go. Uh, Well, I mean, I I, I think the bigger issue is... I've actually expressed sympathy for the private aerospace companies that I know do have possession 
of retrieved non-human technology. I know that with a reasonable degree of certainty, because in some cases, not all cases, they've done the retrievals themselves. And I can understand why there was concern about the confiscation, the eminent domain laws, because frankly, why should the government be able to confiscate technology that an aerospace company has recovered at its own cost um, it should perhaps be alerted to the existence of that technology, which is the oversight issue that I think needs to be corrected. Joseph, you have your hand up, my friend. You know, you know, Coulthard is saying that that they spent money uh, on recovering craft. You know, they've made a ridiculous amount of money on the F-22 program, the F-35 program, and the new NGAC uh, program that's coming up, which the aircraft the uh, contractor hasn't been decided who's going who's gonna to make that aircraft yet but uh they're, they're just making money hands over fist uh you know two billion dollars for for the uh for the b for the b uh the b2 spirit uh no aircraft costs that much money they're siphoning off billions upon billions of dollars and sending them into programs to uh do uh, r d on alien craft and whatever else they're working on i have to ask the question too if they have gone and recovered craft, who told them where the craft crashed? Was it the military? Yeah. Was it the intelligence community? Did someone tip their hand? Or do they have a bunch of military-grade satellites up there on their own that they're using to track this and to figure it out? I think it's the prior versus the later, meaning they're getting tipped off to where some of this stuff is. Now, they may be spending yeah, would, money would, to go ahead and recover it. Go ahead. It was either Nor Nor NORAD or the NRO that tipped them off. Unless, no. unless, they, unless like you said, they or, have their, their own. Or the uh, Air Force or the Space Force or who knows. Right. My but listen, Thomas, our friend and colleague, Christopher Shaw from the Liberation Times, he broke this story recently. We know exactly where it's coming from. The Central Intelligence Agency has been contracting Lockheed and aerospace companies like that for decades. We know exactly how they're coming into contact with these materials and how they're being paid and contracted by the Central Intelligence Agency to do this kind of work and expand upon it on their own. So there's corruption always, but we know exactly now. We're not guessing anymore. It's not speculation. We know exactly who the players are, who's involved, and what's going on. So not a mystery, not anymore. And then yeah. that's what we're up against with this. So, Lee, I see he, you have your hand up. Go ahead. You want to add to it? Yeah, Mike, you, you're absolutely right. Based off of what um, Christopher Sharp um, and, and through his journalism and their investigations brought to light, which is that people say, you know, is is Lockheed Martin going and recovering these craft? No, they're not. The CIA is. And that's why when Lockheed Martin wanted to come forward, allegedly, and um, offload what they had, the CIA came in and said, no, you cannot talk to Congress about these materials at all. And it got shot down. And those aren't my words. That's what Christopher Sharp said that his whistleblowers told him that's going on. So yes, the CIA is running all of the recovery. And even if the contractor wants to talk to Congress about it post fact, the CIA apparently has an avenue to step in even with, I don't know, executive oversight or they can trump the executive branch. I don't know what's happening there. The CIA can step in and say, absolutely not. No, no, that will not happen. And that was what was reported by Christopher Sharp, right, Mike? It was, Lee. Plus, we know there's countless examples throughout decades of history. The CIA has absolutely trumped the executive branch in most of the things that they've been involved in, especially including this. So yeah, that goes back to the original point that Thomas talks about all the time. It's like they're functioning as a fourth branch of the government. They're independent. They don't need oversight. They don't need funding. They don't have to explain or answer to anybody. That shouldn't be how it is. And Thomas even went so far as to cover when President Eisenhower was leaving office, his uh, farewell speech, he talked about this back in 1960. So we're still in the same world 60 years later. Nothing has really changed. That's the problem. What do you think, Thomas? Yeah, it, it is a problem that we've been dealing with for a little, little girl. It, it, is a, it is a problem that's been around for the longest time here, unfortunately. Uh, 
as I get to little Mocha's coming out to say hi right now. Uh, on that note, let me go to Ali uh, for a second. Ali, go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, have a question. From what I have understood is the NASA has the, what you call, uh, call the eminent domain rights of everything that falls on American Earth. Uh, so I wonder, um, is the, how, how is that eminent domain to NASA? Is it existing or not? Well, you bring up a good point because any any space material that crashes within the bounds of the United States is under the full uh, ownership and control of NASA. Remember, I, I believe it's in 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 uh, Australia where people in Australia are only have you know up to like fifty feet uh, of the surface under the ground from where they live. Anything else is under government control. Anything over 500 feet or something above where their house is, that's all under government control. We only have restricted areas or avenues of what we own or what we have rights to. And if there is space junk or space material, for instance, I'll, uh, Joseph, if you had a piece of a space station or a satellite that came down and crashed in your yard, while it may have damaged your property and it may be on your property, the feds are going to be knocking on your door to go haul that away because you don't have a right to that technology. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So how is that, it? That, these... make, that, make, that totally makes sense. You know, I just want to reiterate what, what Mike uh, what Mike said. You know, the, what the CIA has been doing and what they've been getting away with, that makes them completely and totally rogue and constitutionally illegal. Who puts the feet to their fire? Who holds them uh, accountable? Yeah, and, and my question is too, if NASA is first first in line here with the rights to, to this kind of material, normally if NASA doesn't have it, the second normal in line in Western world, that's, that's um, the owner of the land. So I don't see where, where the contractors can get in between here and collect them themselves as corporate sets that they retrieved it. With what right did they retrieve it? I don't understand the, the the legal logic here. I hear you completely. I hear you completely, Ali. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, there is no logic to this. It's it's illogical what we're seeing. Lee, your comments. So my comment is is that the CIA embeds agents within um, universities corporations and uh, scientific and or, you know, materials um, research foundations. So technically on the books, they work for, you know, MIT or they work for Battelle or they work for, you know, any number. Um, but that person that is actually working for Battelle is actually contracted and was put in that place by the CIA. They were physically put in that position. So whatever material that they gather and whatever operations are done within these private protected aerospace companies, actually they, the CIA planted people in those positions to work those jobs for those companies. So on paper, they're working for Battelle, they're working for Lockheed Martin, but they were actually, C they were actually Air Force OSI or CIA before they were put into that position and they're reporting back to. And that's how the CIA severs all connections to lead back to the CIA. Because if there's somebody that's found out that knows any information working for Battelle, it gets shut down immediately because, no, there. It, in all actuality, they were placed in that position by the CIA. They were put in that position by them. And that's how the CIA is managing this flow of information and keeping the, and keeping the lid on all of it. And that's why they have so much power to keep it from coming out and getting back to Congress and back to the executive branch. Yeah. It's a slippery, so uh, a slippery slope to say the least, uh, Lee, let's go ahead and continue on with this video. We just started, but the conversation is just amazing. I appreciate all the comments coming in from the chat and from our friends in the back. This, this is what this show is about. It's about community. It's about everything. Remember, if you're all part of this community, do us a favor, folks. We have 238 people watching. How many likes do we have? Let's go ahead and take a look and see. With only 95 likes, do us a favor, friends. If you're having a fun time, you're enjoying the show, want to be a part of the community, do your part. Give us a thumbs up. And if you're not having a good time, give us a thumbs down. We'll take one or the other. And if you have anything to say, put it in the comments below the video. We'd love to hear from you. But lastly, 
If you haven't subscribed to Disclosure Tonight, do us a favor, friends. Hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you back on a regular basis. And one last thing, check that bell to make sure you're set up for all notifications because we do have a show five days a week. If we're going to be off, the only thing we're going to post up here is a, a live stream or to let you know that there's not going to be a show for the night. So check that bell, my friends. On that note, let's get back to this piece coming in from Ross Colhart. I've always had a problem legally with the idea that the federal government can step in after the fact and confiscate everything relating to non-human technology. And I, I know, because I've spoken to people about it inside Defence Aerospace, I know that was the concern. Um, I think, But it's not just Defence Aerospace, friends. It's Defence Aerospace and it's, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? It's the, it's the industry that supports biologics, biotech, right, Lee? Yeah, that's absolutely what it is. It's, it's a shift from, like we've been told before, the UAP and the technology is the sideshow. Right. Um, it's the biotechnology that is the, uh, the greatest secret that is um, being, under, uh, being held under wraps. Um, yeah. it's, it's the infusion of technology and organics and bio, you know, bio that um, is the greatest secret. So it's biotech. It's also material science. We're nope. dealing with energy production. And we're dealing with the war machine. There's a bunch of different industries that are out there that are all probably, uh, you know, um, the drug industry as well. They're all involved in this. And it's not just one particular part. And we're all fo- always focusing on the defense contractors. It's so much more than defense contractors. It's, it's pervasive in every part of advancements we've had in technology. Biggest thing that I want to point out to everybody, take a look at what a... Uh, quantum computer looks like it's not based on electricity sending the signals it's based on microwaves what do uaps put off in high sort high amounts microwave radiation is there a tie to that well there could be but it's something that you just look at the advances and how it's gone and what the stuff looks like and you're saying really we came up with that i guess but was there an inspiration somewhere let's get to this here we go the government could have written more careful legislation, which basically allowed for it to be made aware of defense aerospace technology that is of non-human origin. Uh, And then they could have negotiated a way to, once they're notified of its existence, assert control over it in some way. But would you want to have a company like Moderna or Pfizer or anyone else going ahead and taking biological materials from ETs to go ahead and create vaccines and other types of things and be able to bring that out to the market without the government being cued in, that they're using stuff based on non-human and uh, non-human biologics to go ahead and create some of this stuff without knowing the true implications of what it could be, Joseph? Yeah, you know, you know these, these, uh, what, what about these uh, companies that, that can take um, biological material from, from these uh, uh, NTIs and uh, secretly used uh, the American citizens as, as guinea pigs to, uh, to to conduct experiments. They've been caught many times before conducting experiments on their own citizens. It's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. I hear you completely. I also want to go ahead and thank Brennan England for that wonderful super chat that came in during the conversation. It's been a heated conversation tonight. Folks, I really appreciate everything to see where this whole thing has been going here tonight. Uh, all right, let's get back to this video. Great point, Joseph. You know, can can we trust government? No. Can we trust unregulated um, corporations who have access to this to possibly use it for their greed and advancement? No, this is something that should be part of humanity, not part of democracy and greed. Here we go. Ultimately, what lies behind all of this? I don't think any of us begrudge the idea that some of the best developments in aerospace technology in the last 70 to 80 years have come from places like Lockheed Martin, Skunk Works. You know, the US government is 
pretty bloody hopeless at developing its own technology. Private enterprise, free enterprise is the better way of actually getting this done. And I love the story of Ben Rich and his colleagues going out and developing technology like the Blackbird, the SR-71, the U-2 spy plane, and frankly, building in the black technology that wasn't possible to be built inside the constraints of the US government. And hopefully, Hopefully, that's what's happening right now. Hopefully, somebody is looking right now, sitting in a cave somewhere in some facility in deep in the Nevada desert, kicking the tires of a TR-3B and trying to figure out how it works. And hopefully, that will be provided to the benefit of the US people and provide propulsion systems and power technologies that benefit not just the US, but the rest of the planet. And I can understand why there is a national security imperative that's placed on protecting those ideas. What I don't understand, and I think many of the people inside the program feel the same way, many of the people don't understand why the, the fact of the existence of a non-human intelligence should continue to be kept secret. And the argument seems to be that it's a slippery slope, that if you reveal that, you then have to reveal the existence of technology and that it inevitably leads to the sequestering by the federal government. And so I think that's what lies behind the pushback that's happened in the last few weeks behind the Congress. I, I do think that there were legitimate concerns about the eminent domain laws. And, you know, I've had points of difference with some of the people who have proposed those laws, that their view was that in order to force the disclosure of the existence of these technologies, the only way was to, to assert the confiscation thereof, the eminent domain procurement. But I think in the long run, that's actually been fatal to legislation that, that really, frankly, was fantastic. It was the first legislation in US history that would have compelled the release of UAP records that we know exist and which most of the rest of the legacy media have their heads up certain orifices describing their interest in. I mean, the simple fact is, we're beyond the issue now of whether UAPs are real. The Pentagon's admitted they're real. We're beyond the issue now of whether NHIs are a possible reality. Legislation before the Congress now admits that that is a possible reality. There you go. Ali, you had your hand up, my friend. Yeah. Uh... You know, we're in a kind of bizarre, absurd uh, situation here. Uh, with the reasoning that um, that uh, Coulthard uh, is uh, putting forward here, uh, if we look, if we listen to to Richard Doty's chronicles, he reveals that both China and Russia have their own retrieval um, programs. And that the U.S. has also cooperated with China uh, concerning its UAPs. So the conclusion is for me then, well, all the intelligences, military intelligences all over the world, they know about this. The only people who doesn't know it is, uh, is our politicians and, our, uh, and the population. And that's kind of strange, really. It, it, it's, um, it seems to be it's, it's some of our politicians, not all of them, because there are some of them who are getting more than enough funding coming in from the military contractors in, in order to go ahead and affect policy and law. Yes, and you also have those uh, politicians who have been briefed on, on the UAP issue as well. There's, a, there's a many of them who, know, who knows what's going on. But uh, I, and when it comes to this, um, what, the, what do you call it, the eminent domain, uh, even if you let the, uh, the contractors hold on to these and, uh, and explore them, they at least should report that they have them. So there has to be an oversight and a register that, uh, that is for, for um, uh, the political oversight. That's not the, the, that's not, that's, that's how to solve the problem half ways as I see it. Yeah, great well, point. I just want to add real quick, getting back to what we were discussing about the CIA and Lockheed. Everyone is familiar with the SR-71 Blackbird, but that would came out in 1964. In 1960, 
the Central Intelligence Agency contracted Lockheed to design the A-12, which was the predecessor to the SR-71. So Lockheed and the CIA have been working hand in hand with each other for decades. And that's something that has been relatively unknown by the public. Not a secret. Central Intelligence Agency was also responsible for um, setting up Area 51. That was, they were the ones that, that had the area and Lockheed was the one that set up the base. So CIA and Lockheed, this is a marriage made in hell that we have been forced to deal with the consequences of uh, for over half a century already. So this is, is an, not something that's unknown at this point. It's something that's been well established. That's what I wanted to add to the conversation. In other words, what you're saying, Mike, is that there is a there there. Oh, hell yeah. There's, all, there's been a there there for a long time. I, I'm surprised that the Congress has their head in the sand and doesn't recognize what the public so clearly sees. It's, I don't know, are, are they dumb? Are they unaware? Or is it the, you know, cover up and conspiracy? I think it's the latter. The evidence points to that. I have to agree with you on that one, Mike. It is a cover-up. There is a conspiracy. And everyone wants to call it everything that we talk about with UFOs and say, we're the conspiracy theorists. But the true people who are the ones with the conspiracy are the ones in our federal government who are keeping this information out from the general public. That's true. And that's what we're still up against. That, that unholy union between the CIA and uh, Lockheed, military industrial complex, is what 60 years later led to the Schumer Amendment being gutted. So that's not, we're not just making a point about history. This is not a historical fact. This is something that we're still dealing with and is still undoing our efforts to make certain information publicly known. It's, it's not over with. So, uh, da, 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 da. so if Lockheed Martin were lobbying politicians like Re Representative Turner, it's difficult to imagine they'd endorse the language if it had the potential to create any significant challenges. For one, gone is the idea of controlled disclosure relating to alleged human programs, to the uh, uh, re re retrieval and reverse engineering of non-human biologic biologics. One silver lining has become clear, though. They are hiding something. Look at all the things they didn't take out of NDAA, but they did a surgical strike on NDAA for the UAP section. Are you telling me the Republicans gave up all their fighting against the woke agenda just to go ahead and get the stuff taken out of the UAP legislation? You got to wonder, how much money did it cost for the entire Republican agenda against the NDAA to get pulled out? That's pissed off a lot of people in their base. And I hope it really pissed them off to a point where they pull these schmucks out of the leadership roles of these committees because these are the people who let things like transgender affirming sur surgery, abortions, and other things, uh, dra drag shows on military bases. All of the things the Republicans were saying, no, 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 we can't have this, all got through. Was that at the cost of the UAP language? Was it worth the cost to the Republican base? Did the people who supported Mike Turner and Mike Rogers and um, everybody else to go ahead, Mitch McConnell, all these people who are against the NDAA sections for all of the Republican agenda all got sidewashed for UFOs, something that they say doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist and they spent all of this time and effort to go ahead and, and rather than negotiating on the pieces what they should have been getting out to meet the Republican agenda, they got this out. Clearly, there needs to be an investigation of these schmucks for going and going against their party and voting on their, oh, they're not being pushed by pedophiles. Why don't you go ahead to a Catholic church if you want to go see pedophiles resonate? Let's be honest. You got a greater chance of seeing a pedophile at a Catholic, in a, uh, running a, a ceremony at a Catholic church than you actually have it going to a drag show, my friend. Let's be honest. Just saying. <laughs> it popped up and I had to address it. Despite Representative Turner's apparent lack of interest and disregard for UAP allegations, he has veh vehemently strived to eliminate any substantive language within the NDAA 
two sources told the Liberation Times that Representative Turner was running around doing anything he could to kill the language. If there's truly nothing to hide, why are influential me- members of Congress allegedly aided by the CIA and defense contractors working so hard to conceal something that supposedly doesn't even exist? So I can tell you the trannies, they exist. They're part of the drag shows. And you know what? While they just go, me, 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 and they're up there on the stage looking all pretty and stuff, who the hell cares? We care about UFOs here, friends. And if they're willing to give that up to get to that, well, someone get, got out of it. Someone made a gain out of it. So, and now Senator Schumer has seen firsthand level resistance on the topic. Why is that important? Because now we, we know who the hell these people are. Go. All right, here we go. Why is it important? Multiple sources have previously told Wibbleation Times that the original language he proposed was done in coordination with the White House. And that, and that may mean that the White House is very aware of the resistance too. If Schumer proposed the language with Senator Rounds as a proactive step to honor his late friend Sen- Senator Harry Reid, then that may not be a big deal. But if Chuck crying Chuck Schumer was enacting the White House's agenda, then the repercussions of such resistance could have greater consequences. You know what, Mike? I have to say, what a great opportunity to distract the media from Hunter Biden again, who just got nine more felony charges. Was it nine felony charges? I know he had nine charges thrown up against him again. They got him on tax evasion. Yeah. Like they got Al Capone. Same way. Yeah. It's a chink in the armor. Oh, They're yeah. not usually prepared for it. But the yeah. point that Chris is making here with the end of this article, you and I discussed this privately the other day. He's making a very good point. What he's saying is that if the military industrial complex and the Central Intelligence Agency are going to gut a White House's agenda of bringing disclosure out to the public, that means that they're the ones running the country, not the White House. It's a good point. And we were talking about this. So yeah. if this is what the, we're facing, and this is that the White House is basically powerless, um, not the executive branch, the White House, there's a difference. If the executive branch, like the Central Intelligence Agency, is calling the shots and overriding the legislative branch, and the White House itself, the elected official part of it, has no say in the matter, which is, I think, what Chris is pointing out, then this country is really not being run by us and it's on our elected officials. It's being run by a, a, an organization that could care less about what we think. Or the only interested with us is what we pay for. And we, so far, pay for all of it, everything. So... That was what I think was the veiled point that Chris was trying to make at the end of this article. And if that's true, he's right. It's one hell of a point. Because with what happened with the amendment with Schumer, that looks like that's exactly what happened. Because we talked about this on the show, too, if you remember, for a while now. That Schumer amendment, you know, Chuck Schumer wasn't operating in a vacuum. He didn't come up with those pages in that language entirely all by himself or with Mike Rounds. He definitely had input from the White House, specifically Jake Sullivan, head of the National Security Council, with obviously the knowledge and consent of the current sitting president. So this legislative act was in coordination with the White House, and it got gutted. What does that tell you about the actual power that the White House has at this point? It doesn't. And if that's the case, then we have a, we're sitting in the middle of a rogue country that no one is truly controlling. Yep. And if that's the case, then this is about as serious as a heart attack. Yeah, it is. Absolutely.